actually 10.01. Um, Good right to start off. I will remind folks um, to mute themselves. And for those that are reading, uh, you will unmute when we get to that point, if you will. Um, we're, we have some of our youth are volunteering today to be part of the service in celebrations of mom. So, um, so they will be helping to lead and the seagulls have done the children's time that's out on our website or on our YouTube page. You can always pick up children's time past and present as well as um, the worship that we do each Sunday gets up there eventually. I'm a couple of weeks behind, I think, but um, you can catch up if you missed any, uh, those are out there. Kathy, do I have any other announcements I'm supposed to be making? The mission walk, May 22nd. May 22nd, why, why don't you tell us a little about that? It's very exciting. It's organized. Uh, the, the whole Long Island East District is invited to go. So all different churches go and walk for their own for their own cause. We're walking for the United Methodist City Society, which provides scholarships, um, does a lot of ag programs for children, uh, addiction, and it's in person. So 5K, um, there's information in the St. Paul's this week. And I think it'll be a fun day. The walk starts at 11, but there's festivities all day long. You can get there as early as 9.30, bring a lunch. Uh, it sounds like a really fun day. Wonderful. And where are they starting from? Do you know offhand? Yes, it's at Heckshire State Park in Field 2. Okay. So if you want to get out and walk, um, you are more than welcome. And it's a wonderful way of supporting some of the missions of the United Methodist Church. Great. Um, so having shared all of that, I am going to invite um, the Callahans are going to lead us in our opening greeting. You saw the PowerPoint first? Oh gosh, thank you. Sorry. Hold on, Callahans. This is why I have people around me, because I don't remember things all the time. It is wonderful to have people who help me remember. So now um, we are in the PowerPoint and again, I would invite the Ashley and Allie if they will lead us in our greeting. Now? Yes. Break forth, break out, break fast, break dance, break it up. Break into, break or breaker, break up, break bread, take a break, emergency break. Whoa, what, what are, are we, we talking about? about? Breaking is risky business. Broken foot, broken lives, broken hearts, broken ties. But what, what are, are we, ta we talking about? Break Breaking patterns, seeing with new eyes, loving with new ears, loving with new hearts, breaking the molds that will keep us from moving on, moving out, breaking through, breaking forth. Let all creation break forth into praises of this, our awesome God. Let all creation break forth into praises of this, our loving Christ. Let all creation break forth into praises of this, our enlivening spirit.
sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord or the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of horns, make a joyful noise before the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy. This is the call. The sun breaks through the clouds. We lift up our heads to meet the day. We know that God is at work in our lives. We fortify our hearts with passion and action. And when the rain comes again, we will open our umbrellas and set out anyway. We are called to dance again. Amen. And so our first um, hymn this morning is I Come With Joy. And we'll sing three verses of that which uh, will be up on the screen. Dancing to hymns is allowed if you so desire. I come with joy to my Lord, forgiving love and peace in all. Amen. Let us join together in our opening prayer. Holy One, justice seeker, lover of creation, let us be open to learn from the dances of others. Open us to new steps for a new day. Come and dance with us. Engage with us as we seek you, so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite Ocean um, to unmute as she introduces our dreamer this week. Amanda Gorman is a young African-American writer and poet who wrote a poem for President Biden's inauguration. She is an ancestor of slaves and has dreams for the world to be more peaceful and to have better diversity. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president. We are striving to forge our union with purpose to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree and no one shall make them afraid. It's for there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Did you notice what Amanda said at the end of her poem? She said, that is the light. 
that is the goodness and love and justice will be there if we're brave enough to see the light and be the light. So the question is about whether we will act on our dreams to make the world a kinder and more loving place. Our umbrellas are a sign of joy, hope, and dreams, even on rainy days. We will join in our children's prayer and Stephanie is going to um, lead and we echo. So she will read a line and we will echo it after her. Let us pray. We offer thanks for dreamers true. We offer thanks for dreamers true. For all they are and all they do. For all they are and all they do. Let us become dreamers too. Let us become dreamers too. And bring new life to me and you. And bring new life to me and you. Amen. Amen. As God has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had, become, who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For he heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. We are blessed in our relationship with Christ. We are blessed in our relationship with God from the very beginning, from before we were born, God wanted us. From every moment in our lives, God is there and calling us and wanting us to walk with God. And so for a lot of us, we were baptized before we ever knew it was going on. When we were still just babies, we got baptized. And for a lot of Christians, that's it. The next time they're going to walk in church is when they die. Or maybe not even, they'll have a pastor at their funeral at the funeral home, but that's it. For others of us, for those of us gathered here, at least we, we are in worship. And so we recognize our relationship with God in some way on, on a more regular basis. And that's part of this call because the call is for everyone. Peter learned that very dramatically. That, that it's not just for the people that you think it's for. It's not just for those other ones that are within our group, but other people, people, the Gentiles, as anyone who was not part of the community was called, anyone outside of who we are. Last week, we heard about the Ethiopian eunuch and um, for those that believe that God wants nothing to do with people of different orientations, it's like, wow, here you go, one of the first converts, one of the first people that God called was a person of color and a, a person of different orientation. And God said, you are welcome and you are one of mine. But what we hear 
also in these stories is not just that call, but then we have to do something with it. We are called to be Christ followers. And that means an outward and an inward grace, as John Wesley talks about. It's that outward striving toward justice, striving toward working to, to help people in this world live a fair life. It's that outward work to make sure that people um, are clothed, that people are not hungry, that people have shelter. It's that fighting for justice is part of our call because we recognize in all people, our sisters and our brothers, we recognize in all people, God shining within them. And so it's that work, but it's also the inward work. So inward as a church, are we continually looking and saying, how do we welcome others in? Um, I sadly have heard of the churches that like don't want to advertise because we might get the wrong people coming. We have a women's group, but we're not gonna tell anybody except by word of mouth because you know, then you don't have control over if somebody shows up. So we need to continually look and I'm not, it's not here. Thank the good Lord, we're not doing that. But what might we be doing? We need to continually look at our behavior and say, what are we doing that might be closing the door on someone? And that's a, that's a growth edge. That's always a growth edge. Um, for years, the church served wine. And then we said, there are people that really can't take wine. Even that little bit in communion might lead them into places that would be detrimental for them. So we chose to change and to say, we will serve grape juice so that everyone can safely take. And then some 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we started to recognize that not everybody could eat gluten. And so churches started to move toward making their communion gluten-free so that again, we could welcome all people in. We look continually at what we do that might be closing people out. Can they physically get in the building? Can they hear? Can they see? Are we making accommodations for people that find it hard to sit for long times? Do we have room to allow people to stand and, and wander if they need to? How do we help people come to God? And some of those ways are uncomfortable for us. Some of them, it's like, how come we can't just go back to the way it used to be? Um, so it, it's a continual struggle. But the final struggle then is with ourselves. We're not servants, we're friends. And friends work together to get closer together. When you love somebody, you want to, to please them. You want to be the person that they think you are. And so we work on our inward self continually, looking and saying, am I doing better than I was a year ago? Not, am I doing better financially? Not, am I doing better, you know, I'm coping better with this COVID, but am I doing better? Do I pick on people less? Do I show more love? Have I been able to put aside some of the things that pull me down and make me less of the person that I was created to be. We all know what it is that we individually need to work on, um, but, but we're called to work on that, not in a negative way. I don't believe that we have a God sitting up there that when you come with the report card, doesn't notice where you did well, but only says, what about this? What about, you only got a C here. Yeah, but I got four, eight. No, what about that C? Let's talk about that. Our God doesn't do that, but our God continually calls us to say, yeah, if you got a C there, 
What can you do tomorrow that might make it a little better? A God that celebrates with us as we move closer and closer to being that person that we were born to be, using all of who and what we are to be in this world, the face of Christ, the hands of Christ, to walk in Christ's way, to do the work that is so needed on this earth. I know the places where I have just added to the general negativity of this world. I hear it come out of my mouth. I see it in myself. And I know that there is no good coming out of that. I know the places where I could do better. And it's not about beating myself up for that, but it's about waking up each morning and saying, perhaps today I can move a little closer. And I know, I absolutely know that when I am walking with Christ and I have put aside those things that are pulling me away, it is an amazing place to be. I feel so wonderful when I am in that place. I don't have, you know it. You know when you've been there, how you feel as it just wells up inside of you when you say, this is what life should be. Whether it's just standing in awe, looking at nature, whether it's holding a baby in your arms, whether it's helping people to, to do. I just talked with a woman yesterday whose adult daughter recently died of cancer and she told me how as her daughter was struggling with this, they did a lot together. She listed the things that they did together and one of them was mucking out a basement after Sandy for someone. We went out and volunteered. That was a moment where she was hand in hand with Christ, with her daughter, with cancer, working to make someone else's life a little better. Christ was there. Christ is there for each and every one of us. And we can see that more and more as we move into those places. So I invite you to, to consider today, what is it that you're willing to let go of, to leave behind, to turn away from, even knowing that you may fail within half an hour, but you're willing to say today, God help me today to be this person you've called me to be. Amen. Amen. I want to show you um, a video of a person following their call. It is not, it is a dance video, but there's really no place in it for you to dance. So forgive me for that, but it is um, appropriate for Mother's Day because it is a mother and son. Uh, and I guess I have to share in order for you to see that. Otherwise, it does you no good at all. So let's get the PowerPoint back up and Kathy is going to lead us into that. She first has to ask approval. There we go. Um, this is a mother a choreographer from England with her son. Someone said to me the other day, is he your little Shirley Temple? I thought, well, no, he's, he's not my little girl. He's my little boy. And I think, I guess he is my little Billy in a way, my little Billy Elliot. My name is Lizzie G and I'm a choreographer and a dance teacher and a mother to Rufus and Arthur. Hi, my name is Rufus and uh, I'm eight years old. I primarily work in theatre but also in film and television. I watch Tom Holland's tap and people that have, you know, gone on to many different things, those children, which has also inspired this one here. And he's always been asking me to teach him. It wasn't until the pandemic struck and all the work had dried up that we were like, okay, so let's start now. So we bought him a pair of tap shoes in May, I think it was last year. And uh, we started to go from scratch, didn't we really? 
I didn't really expect that he would be at this level where I could be teaching him material that I'd be teaching him professionals. So we're sort of duetting together. So I'm not, re I'm having to like up my standards to keep up with him. And the other day we recorded this routine, which I was super proud of because it was really hard and it's really fast, isn't it? And um, and I thought, well, I'll just put it on Twitter. And this morning we're at nearly 1.7 million views. <laughs> a lot of people have been saying it's so lovely to see a mother and son bonding together. see people have been commenting on um, tap being a bit of a lost art form and that they you know love to see two people sort of loving um, to tap again but also that we've managed to find something positive out of lockdown yeah it's been very nice but um like i've got no one to like play with so like i got something to do with tap and my mum it makes me like forget about all the worries and like just forget about everything and think about you know having fun I want to follow in my mum's footsteps. I want, I want to do all the cool things that she can do. Whether he's got tap shoes on or his slippers on or he's in bare feet, he's always, his feet are always going to beat him away. If he wants to be a dancer and wants to do it, I'm more than happy to keep guiding him and keep helping him on his path forward. And we both love doing it. It's a passion that we both share. And to be able to share it with your, you know, your own flesh and blood and someone that's sort of constantly by your side. And one day he's going to overtake me and I think he'll be teaching me to be quite frank. <laughs>
Let us pray together. Come, O God, and restore our lives. Be with each of us now. May the dance of your spirit ever call us to engage with you and with the needs around us. Lead us, guide us, surround us, and fill us. Let us pray together. Come, come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come. come. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold <clears throat> to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord in heaven. hallowed be thy name. name. Kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day, day our daily bread, daily bread. and forgive and us give our us trespasses, trespasses, as we, we forgive, forgive those, those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory forever. 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 Amen. 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 Our joy is complete because the joy of Christ resides within us. We cannot help but break forth. This joy is available to all, realized the community in Acts. The Holy Spirit finds its way even and especially in what feels like unlikely people and places. Everything in creation and everyone has the potential to offer new insight. So we invite each other to support ministries that move us forward to new solutions for a new world through our offering today. So whatever of your talents, of your time, of your material items that you are ready to offer to the Lord, I invite you to hold that in front of you. We pray, gracious and almighty God, we come here this day before you with our offerings, our tithes, our gifts. We pray that you will receive them, that you will bless them, that you will use them to spread your joy here in this community in the communities that are joined together this day in worship, and in those places which are aching to feel your joy and your love. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who abides in us all. Amen. And so I didn't give you a dance video, but we have now a recording of the trees of the field. And if you wanted to get up and move to this one, you can. Again, we're invited um, in body or in spirit. So if you want to stand up and shake out those bones, that's good. If you want to um, just move your upper body, that's fine. And if you simply dance within your mind. Still, I invite you to dance and mute yourselves as we sing along with the trees of the field. You shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you and the shouts of joy all the trees above the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. And you
has known God, not the God of names, not the God of don'ts, not the God who ever does anything weird, but the God who knows only four words and keeps repeating them, saying, come dance with me, come dance. And may the loving God, risen Christ and dancing spirit fill you with all you need for the days ahead. And all God's people said, Amen. We'll hear our postlude and then stay on to wish each other a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Again, I invite folks to unmute and we can do some well wishing. 